Arab Top Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Guys, uh, breaking news coming out of Israel right now, the Times of Israel. And I want to thank Brother Paul Begley for posting this on Twitter because his post is what drew my attention to it as well. We've already covered two days prophetically about the events that have happened with the Resolution 2334 that just got passed. We have talked about Resolution 181. We've gone into both sides of this, both the good and the bad, as far as things about Israel, the government there, etc. And I know right now, friends, I'm going to tell you something. God knows good and well that Prime Minister Netanyahu would not succeed as a king of Israel. He needs to send a prophet on the scene because it's not going to work in the situation that we're in right now. And I know that you guys know that, but let me tell you something. It still clearly comes down to this. God promised that the Jews would return to their homeland. God said they would return according to Micah chapter 4. He said not only would they return, they'd be there forevermore. But then he also said Israel would get in travail. Israel would be thrown out of Jerusalem. Why? Because there's a plot against the Jews. All right. Now, that's completely aside the Zionist project that was started by the by the British, the, the Vatican, and the Zionist. Okay, the Zionist Rothschilds, these, these men that supposedly are Jews that are really not Jews, okay? They're not really Jews. These, this, this Rothschild clan out there in Great Britain that, that funded a lot of the projects. If they were really for the Jewish people during World War II, uh, back when they started their campaign, and they make it look like it's a bunch of Jews doing this, believe me, there may have been some genuine Jews and they're trying to do something right, but it got all trampled down by this uh, Zionist project, all right? I'm not for that. I'm not for it at all. But I am for the fact for the Jewish people to come home for the seeing of their Messiah. And I will say another thing when it comes to that. I also know that Rome is going to get control of Jerusalem once again. Why? God's going to set the stage back up the way it was 2,000 years ago. And at the same time, we know prophecy says all the nations will come down. Everybody's going to burden themselves with Jerusalem. But those that burden them with that, with that stone there, it ain't going to be a good end for them. All right, let's get into this. Now, uh, going right into the story here. Uh, France has set it up for a meeting on January 15th. They are going to capitalize on Obama uh, withstanding from the vote on uh, that just happened there where they were allowed to, uh, the UN calling for, for no settlements to be built in uh, the West Bank. Uh, and of course, Netanyahu has gone nuts over this. I think it's clearly prophecy again. I believe that he's fulfilling Daniel's vision in Daniel chapter 11, verse 39 there. He is letting them know it's the king of the south pushing against the king of the north, and that's the Roman Pope right there. And the Pope's military is about to turn on him big time, right? But now watch this. You got to keep in mind what is happening here biblically when we look at this. All right? Netanyahu is pushing back against them. But all along he's been playing with them for a long time as well. He invited Rome in, just like the Maccabees, back uh, after the revolt and after the 25 years of battle. Then the next thing you know, they invite Rome in to become to be their ally, just like Shimon Perez did, invited Rome in to be their ally. Give, give Rome uh, Jerusalem, by the way, while you're at it. That's why we know Shimon Perez was truly a Jesuit. He went to a Jesuit school. It's written in the autobiography of Yitzhak Rabin, in case you didn't know that. And I believe a lot of people in power in Israel are probably Jesuits. So not everything is the way it seems when we look at the Zionist issue here that uh, so many people are, are against the Zionist. I'm not against genuine Zionism that is a spiritual Zionism for the Jews to return to their homeland. But I'm definitely not in favor of the Zionist movement of the Rothschilds and the, the, the British elite and the Vatican, the Pope of Rome, and all of them setting up for their agenda with the elite around the world to take over Jerusalem. I am dead set against that type of Zionism or the Greater Israel Project, as it's called, to wipe out all the Arabs in the, in the surrounding nations. Don't you guys know that they're also supposed to come and wipe out all the Jews as well? So that eventually the Pope ends up taking the whole land for himself in the first place. No wonder why God has to come and fight for Israel. Because you're there to wipe out everybody. You use the Jews to wipe out the Muslims, and then you turn around and have the Muslims wipe out the Jews. That was what the plan was, wasn't it? Albert Pike said so. Hmm, interesting. 
But they're going to capitalize on this. Paris, France. Representatives from approximately 70 countries will gather in France on January the 15th for a conference to throw the international community's weight behind a two-state solution in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. French officials said Thursday, neither Israel nor the Palestinians will be present at the meeting, but France intends to invite Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to Paris sometime afterwards to brief them on the outcome of the talks, the foreign ministry said. French Foreign Minister Jean-Marc uh, Ayarault, currently visiting the Lebanese capital Beirut, said he hoped the meeting would relaunch the peace process and reaffirm the necessity of having two states. Netanyahu rejected a French proposal earlier this month to meet Abbas in Paris. We would like to invite him anyway, a French official said. The French have been pushing an initiative and uh, revitalizing the moribund peace process between the Palestinians and Israelis. Sounds like to me they're going to force a two-state solution is what it sounds more like to me. And what really is irritating, when you go back and look at British's uh, hand in toppling the Ottoman Empire, they toppled it for one reason. And that was because there were Iranian Jews, wealthy Iranian Jews, that had come to the Promised Land back around the mid-1800s and began to buy up land because the Ottoman Empire were allowing Jews now to buy property inside of what we call Israel today. Well, the Vatican wasn't going to stand for that. That's when they created the Greater Zionist Project. And no, I don't think there were really too many Jews allowed in on that conference either. The purpose was, was to go and take over the Middle East and create a huge Zionist state. Even if you look at the Zionist state under the British mandate in, uh, what was it, July of 1922, everything that is modern-day Jordan and everything that is Israel and the West Bank and Gaza was all considered to be a land that was set aside for what? The Jews! There was about a half million Arabs in the land at that time. About 80,000 Jews. And what was really interesting, even though it was supposedly set aside for a Jewish homeland, it radically began to change. Three-fourths of the land, within six months, was handed over to a, uh, a Heshmonite king, or made the guy was made a Heshmonite king, which became the Jordanian kingdom of today. So, Within six months, the Jewish people get a homeland only to have three-fourths of it given, or two-thirds of it given away to another, to another guy, uh, rewarding him for helping them to topple, topple the Ottoman Empire. Then it wasn't long after that, we have in 1947, the Resolution 181, that then, or, or excuse me, then, excuse me, once they give that part to the Jordanians, then they said everything to the west of the uh, Jordan River, now that will be the Jewish homeland. Well, another, uh, what? 25 years go by and the Resolution 181, they changed their mind again. Of course, during that time, they were curtailing the amount of Jews that were allowed to come in and they had opened the floodgates to the Egyptians and to the Jordanian the Arabs to start coming into this land west of the, uh, 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 of the Jordan River so that they could effectively try to take over the land and stop the Jews from coming in altogether. And in fact, the mandate... Even though they were going to give Jews land, they were going to still curtail it to where only 75,000 more Jews were allowed to come in, making it about 150,000 Jews. And they were going to give them a little sliver of land and make, the, make a huge part for, for what they call today Palestinians, which were Jordanians and Egyptians that had migrated in during this 25-year uh, period. Uh, and then, at that point there, the Palestinians, so-called the Arabs, the Jordanian and Egyptians that had migrated into the land, they refused the, the deal. They said, the Jews ain't going to get anything. What started off for a place to get the Jews back to their homeland was just a farce. It was just a fake idea, is what it really comes down to. It's what it seems to be anyway. During World War II, when Jews could have been sent there to alleviate the, the Jewish problem that Hitler so, so bad had. In fact, Hitler wanted them to go there from some of the historical documentation I've been able to find, but Pope Pius decided that Hitler needed to execute them instead. And from what I understand, he didn't want to execute them. He wanted to send them to Palestine or to modern-day Israel. But the Pope wanted to murder them instead. 
And that takes some deep searching to find that one there. But that's what historical records are showing. So for six years, Jews were not allowed to go to the, to the homeland, period. While during that time, they kept migrating in more Egyptians and more Jordanians there to try to build up that area because that's who the Pope of Rome was working with. And during that time, the Vatican was gaining a lot of popularity amongst the Arabic people in that region of the world. They had hospitals built, etc., things like that. All right, now we get to 1947, and again, like I said, the Palestinians didn't accept it, and the Jews, they had to fight for what little bit they got, so the Palestinians lost a little bit more of the land that they would have got, because of the war, and of course, the Jordanians came and fought against the Jews there, and that's the reason why Israel lost also Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem, from the very beginning, was not going to be a part of any of this, right? So here's where we come to now. This latest thing that they're going to do on the 15th. Again, we're going to recap a little bit, but we're going to do look at one other prophecy. I just mentioned this earlier today. Be in pain and labor to bring forth the daughter of Zion like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and shalt come even to Babylon. There shalt thou be rescued. There shall the Lord redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. And now many nations are assembled against you that say, Let her be defiled, and let her eye gaze upon Zion. That right there is what's going to be fulfilled on January 15th. Many nations are assembled against thee. An assembly, United Nations, what do they call that? Isn't that, isn't that called the General Assembly? Isn't that what they call that? Let's, let's look that up. Let's just see. United Nations. Let me, let me just, let's, let's actually, instead of just going to their website, let's do like this here. All right. Let's go with United Nations General Assembly. <clears throat> well, there you go, right there on the very front there. The United Nations General Assembly. Hmm. I, I just like the wording. United Nations General Assembly. Wikipedia. That's where you can look at that at. Uh, organs of the United Nations. Hmm. And the point is just using the word there, right? So what do we have here? And now many nations are assembled against thee that say, let her be defiled and let our eyes gaze upon Zion. What is the reason then? Why is the United Nations so anxious to vote about a two-state solution? It's all because of Zion. They want Jerusalem for the Pope. That's the prize for the Vatican. But what else do we have here? Zechariah chapter 12. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. They shall look upon me because they have thrust him through and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. So they're going to see their Messiah at the time that this happens as well. There's one thing I wanted to bring out to your attention. Though. Verse 8 is interesting. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem and he that stumbleth among them at that day shall be as David. I thought that was interesting. In Hebrew right here, Vehaya Hanishachal Beham, he that stumbled, this is right here, and he that stumbles in them or among them, either one in that day. That word stumble there can be used for the word that's feeble among them as well. Or it can be used as just like a trip. That could actually refer to someone like Netanyahu, who started off good years ago, you know. Because I've always said, we don't need two states. Why can't Arabs and Jews just live together in peace? Why can't they live under the same laws and be governed equally among their own peers? Why can't you have, I mean, it's just like America. Do you think America doesn't have Arabs and Jews living there together? Do you don't think we don't have in America both Arabs and Jews that are actually in politics, in, in the uh, 
We have actually have Arabs and Jews sitting inside of Congress, inside the Senate? Sure. Even in the Knesset, we have Arabs in the Knesset. What's the big deal? And so what? You could do it that way. You don't have to keep dividing the land. The land is being divided because Britain, with the, with the Pope of Rome, according to Daniel chapter 11, verse 39, it was done intentionally for gain. That's the only reason you're dividing up the land. Whatever suits their purpose. But anyway, so he that, he that stumbleth among them in that day shall be as David. I think that the prophecy may be specifically referring to Netanyahu. He stumbled. He went to Rome. He tried all kinds of shenanigans to try to bring about peace in Israel. He played their game. He even attacked Syria when he knew good and well he didn't need to attack Syria. He just played Obama's game. He has stumbled. He has done what he shouldn't have done. But maybe now God will deliver this man and get his eyes to open to who he is, who he should be, and not what he has been. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. I think God knows they'll destroy themselves in the process. One other bit of news here before we close out. The NATO Auditor General was found dead in Belgium. This just happened a few days ago. The body of Yves uh, Chendelin was found in the city of uh, Andenine, 140 kilometers from the place where he works, 100 kilometers from where he lives at. And it's the strangest thing going on because what the NATO auditor has been working on is to find out if NATO's been funding, funneling money over to the terrorists. Well, although the police were trying to say it was a suicide, his family has been very quick to point out their, their family member, their loved one, husband, father, is not, was not a man that was given to do suicide. Looks like to me he may have been on to something and NATO didn't want that coming out to the public. Funneling money to terrorists. Well, I can tell you right now, he would have been 100% right on to it and maybe he was willing to come out and tell the world, we're, fun we're funneling money to terrorists. NATO is. Sure they are. We found that out from uh, Aaron Erdem. When Aaron Erdem said that it was coming from Europe, is where the money was coming from, and the chemicals for the weapons that were used by ISIS inside of Syria and blamed on President Bashar al-Assad. Imagine that. Well, this man lost his life for finding out the truth. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.